Remember how when you were little or back in the day, when you would think about the future, you would think of things like flying cars, robots, well, actually, robots are more of our present, more so than our future, but whatever. Um, <laughs> and things that looked like a sci-fi movie. Well, this new moon in Aquarius is all about the future and shaping the future in a way that's very different from the past. The energy that we're going to have at our disposal is going to be insane in a good way. But the best part about it is that it's going to allow us to shape our future and make it truly out of this world. If you want to know more, keep watching and I'll explain all about it. everybody it's your girl Mel of Divine Feminine Works and as always I hope that this video finds you well and in excellent spirits if you're new welcome if you're returning welcome back this channel is everything tarot astrology and spirituality so if those are the things that interest you don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so you'll always be notified when I come out with new content all right guys so this is going to be a uh, quick and dirty astro forecast and tower reading for the new moon in Aquarius, which is happening on February 11th. I feel like this new moon is going to be very, very powerful. Um, not to say that all other new moons aren't powerful, but the intensity level of this one, I think is going to be heightened, particularly since we have six or five planets in the sign of Aquarius right now. So Aquarius right now is like gem packed with planetary energy. And this new moon is sort of happening right in the thick of it. There aren't any really major aspects to this new moon, apart from the fact that it is smushed between all of these planets. But particularly what I love about this new moon and what I feel, why I feel like it's going to be super powerful is because on the same day, Venus and Jupiter are going to be conjunct in Aquarius as well. This is like a gold star day. Both Venus and Jupiter are known as benefic planets. And basically benefic planets bestow positive energy. Venus is all about money, luxury, attraction, love, relationships. Jupiter is all about expansion, abundance, optimism, and faith. So it's like super positive energy that's going to be right next to or surrounding this new moon in Aquarius. So I feel like it's going to be very powerful. I feel like any intentions that you set for this new moon, I feel like they're really going to be like sprinkled with fairy dust and positive energy. So keep that in mind. So let's talk about Aquarius for a second and what Aquarius means and what it's like as a sign. So Aquarius is very intellectual. It's very rebellious and it's very forward thinking. When you think of Aquarians, a lot of people equate them to like aliens. They're sort of in their own world and they can see far beyond what we know and uh, see here on Earth. So I feel like wherever Aquarius falls in your chart and whatever intentions you want to set for this new moon, I feel like it should definitely be forward thinking and um, optimistic. I mean, new moons are all about setting intentions, right? They're all about planting new seeds you know, planting seeds that you want to see grow, wanting to start new projects, breathe new life into something, right? But, and it all depends on where it falls in your chart. But with this new moon, I feel like you should really look towards the future and don't be afraid to think big and dream big. Apart from just being forward looking, Aquarius is all about dreams. It's not dreams in the sense of like when you're sleeping and you dream. It's more of your aspirations and your ambitions. So don't forget to dream big and look ahead towards the future. 
Aquarius is also about rebellion and it's also about deviating from the norm and the status quo. If you take a look at what's going on around the world right now, it's like there is this rebellious spirit that is just pumping through everybody's veins right now. Everyone wants to break chains, break generational curses, start anew, build new foundations of abundance and stability in very different ways. I mean, Aquarius is also the age of information. And if you notice, almost every business now is based online. Most people work from home. You can work from anywhere now, right? And I feel like that is definitely where we're going in the very near future and even in the far distant future. So keep those in mind when you think about the things that you want to start during this new moon and at this time. Again, I feel like it's just going to be really advantageous. I feel like it's going to be very positive and it's going to help you build a new foundation in a way that you haven't been able to do in the past. So I'm really excited about this new one and I think you guys should be too. As far as whatever manifestation work or rituals you want to do, this is all about intention setting. So you'll want to do some journaling. You'll definitely want to do some contemplation. Remember that Mercury is still retrograde during this new moon. So your thoughts may be all over the place. You may be thinking a lot about the past. You may be remembering a lot from the past. So take some time during this new moon to really sit down and think about what it is that you want and what it is that you want to manifest. Right now, I feel like it's the best time to sort of think of a plan. And once the once Mercury goes direct and once you and once the moon moves out of this new moon phase and starts working its way towards the full moon, that's when you're going to want to start putting these plans into action. So keep that in mind. Um, so, yeah, going back to any manifestation work you want to do, I would do journaling. Um, you know, writing out your intentions, writing petitions. One of my favorite things to do is you take a bay leaf, as you can see, right? And you'll want to write your intentions on them. And then you'll just want to, I'm not going to burn them now, but you'll just want to burn them. And I love doing that because that sort of, it sets your intentions on fire. And any of you who have a lot of fire in your chart, this is one of the best ways to do some intention setting work. And also use your intuition. You know, a lot of times people are like, well, what should I do for this new moon? Or what should I do for this full moon? Like I'm confused. I feel like the best thing to do is to follow your intuition. Everyone has their own magic. Everyone has their own thing or things that work best for them. So really think about what would work best for you. Perhaps if you have a lot of water in your chart, you might want to do some intention setting in the shower, like while you take a shower, maybe you want to take a spiritual bath. If you have earth and you're looking to manifest something stable and grounded, you might want to even bury some of your intentions. But again, it's really up to you, up to your intuition. Um, do what feels right and what makes sense for you. But either way, I really feel like you're going to want to take advantage of this new moon because the energy is going to be super potent and it's going to really provide fertile soil for you to plant new seeds of whatever it is that you want to manifest going forward. All right. So now that we've gotten the astrology out of the way, let's get into the tarot and see what messages spirit has for us for this new moon. I'm excited because I'm going to be using this new deck I got. It's called Queen of the Moon Oracle. Yes. Um, which I thought was perfect for this new moon reading. So let's break it in together and see what messages spirit has for us for this new moon in Aquarius for February 11th. Oh, okay. A little difficult to come out. Ah, there we go. All right, cool. Oh, hmm. It says Thunder Moon, and it's entitled Change. This, oh, can I just tell you, this message is going to be so on point. So Aquarius is ruled by depending on which ideology of astrology you follow, Aquarius is either ruled by Saturn or Uranus. Uranus is all about surprises. It's all about sudden energy and it's depicted by what? The thunderbolt. So I feel like this moon is really going to be about change. 
again, Aquarius energy is all about like deviating from the norm. It's about breaking out of the mold, thinking outside of the box and going beyond what you know and what you're comfortable with. And I feel like this new moon is setting the stage for some serious change that we're all about to experience in the near future. Let me read from the book and see what uh, this really has to say. What is this? 35. Okay. Okay, it says change. Accept change, life, what? I'm sorry. Sometimes <laughs> I'm like, what does this say? <laughs> I'm sorry. My re I'm, I'm telling you, my reading skills are a lot better than this. Trust me. Except change. Life, like the seasons, is about to change. Take advantage of change energy. Plan ahead. Wasn't I just saying before that Aquarius is all about that forward looking and futuristic type of energy? So really, I feel like with this new moon, it goes beyond just trying to manifest something within your immediate vicinity or something that you already know. I feel like that's why you have to think and dream big with this new moon because it, it's very forward looking. It's very futuristic. So accept the change and plan for it. Think ahead to what you would like your life to look like. Think ahead to what you um, want your life to be like in the future. And that's sort of the... That's sort of the space that you need to sit in with this new moon when you're manifesting. Let's see what else it says. One of the great truths in life is that change is constant. It is unavoidable and we can resist all we want, but nothing truly stays the same. It is better then to prepare and even direct change by setting intentions and building our personal power from the inside out. Enough said. This is the time to tap into your personal power to change your future. This isn't about trying to remedy the past. This isn't even trying to manifest things from the past. This is about shaping your future and changing your future and knowing that you have the personal power to change your future. Whether you believe it or not, you truly do. And this new moon is like, is like ground zero for that. All right, let's get into the tarot cards and see what else we got here. Knight of Pentacles. All right, so to me, this sort of denotes that this change is going to be slow and steady. It's like, it's not going to happen overnight. <laughs> it's definitely a work in progress. It's something that's going to take some time. But this also denotes like sticking to it. This, to me, this card is all about consistency. So once you're able to start executing on those intentions that you're setting with this new moon, it's about consistent work towards those goals and those manifestations. It's not just like a set it and forget it kind of thing. It's really about, all right, this is what I want. Let's say you want to open a new business and do $10,000 a month consistently in revenue, right? I feel like with this new moon, you're going to set the intention. And once you start to execute the plan, you're going to start to put that plan in motion. One of the best ways to achieve a goal, I think, is to reverse engineer it. So if you need $10,000 a month, if your goal is $10,000 a month, what is going to bring you to that $10,000? What is go what action steps do you need to take on a regular and consistent basis in order to meet that goal. That's sort of the energy of this new moon. It's not just, oh, I wanna you know, make $10 million and like that's it and you have like no plan in place. This is about planning, strategizing, reverse engineering your goals in order to achieve them. Because again, not again, just for the first time <laughs> that I'm saying this, the Knight of Pentacles is also speaks of tangible things. This isn't just some pie in the sky dream. This is a tangible way of achieving that goal, of making that goal and that manifestation an actual reality, not just a pipe dream. All right, let's get some more. Eight of Wands. This to me is about like, it's this energy of dissemination. It, this very much reminds me of Jupiter's energy right now, expansion and movement. I feel like once you get that plan into place, 
and you start executing, execute far and wide. Don't limit yourself to what you know. Don't limit yourself to what you're comfortable with. That is the whole essence of Aquarius season. It's about breaking those chains and breaking out of that box. So once you start dreaming big and once you start executing these intentions, cast a wide net. That's just what I heard. Cast a wide net. Let's get some more cards out here. I'm loving this energy. Mm, justice. Interesting. This is about fairness. Oh, this is perfect. This is very Venusian energy. And what was I saying before? Um, on the same day as this new moon, Venus is going to be conjunct to Jupiter. So in casting a wide net, there's also inherent in this, this new moon energy, I feel like is this energy of fairness and justice and like, Things balancing out. I feel like there's nothing that you need to do specifically. I feel like it's more so this energy of the scales are going to balance out on their own. It's almost like spirit is going to come in and sort of balance things out. Remember I said it's like you're going, whatever intentions you set with this new moon, it's like spirit is going to sprinkle like fairy dust and positivity. And I feel like part of that is this energy of fairness and balance, which I love. That's great. Let's get another card out here. All right, we've got the Six of Cups. It's interesting because the Six of Cups is all about nostalgia. It's all about um, things from the past. And even though this new moon, the energy is very futuristic and forward looking, for some of you, it's about a desire you've had for a long time, perhaps a desire that you've had since you were a child. So even though it's not about fixing the past, it's almost like some of you may have to go back into the past and remember the things that you loved, the things that made you happy, the things that made you joyful and build upon that. Because ultimately, we all want to be happy, right? And sometimes in life, we get sidetracked from what it is that we want. Sometimes the things that we want, we sort of put on the back burner because we don't deem them as important in the present moment. Some of you may have wanted to be, I'm going to give a very random example. Maybe you wanted to be a dancer when you were a kid, right? But then life got in the way and you were like, well, how am I going to make money from dancing? How am I going to do this? This isn't practical. This isn't maybe adult-like. And so you sort of put that dream and that desire aside. But it's something that's still like, you know, it's something that you still feel in your heart. And so maybe this new moon is a sign for you to start exploring that. Maybe it doesn't mean that you're going to just like uproot your life and, and start a dance career. Or maybe you will. But maybe, just maybe, it's about thinking about what brings you joy. So really, like I said before, really sit and reflect on a lot with this new moon. Think about what you want. Think about the things from the past that make you happy, that make you content, and maybe start building your future based on those things. All right, let me just get two more cards here. I wanna keep this short and sweet. Ooh, love this energy. Queen of Wands, it's like she makes magic. Look at her hand. Again, this is this sort of Venusian and, and Jupiterian energy that's concurrent with this new moon. It's this making things happen. Look at how enthusiastic she is. Look at how, it's like she's got a magic wand in her hand. Like she's making it happen. She's tapped into her own magic. And look at these candles. Some of you really need to sit and like meditate break out some candles, maybe do some candle magic. Once the new moon passes, you don't wanna do candle magic necessarily on the day of the new moon, but you may wanna do it once the moon starts making its way towards the full moon, right? But it's really about tapping into your own magic and making your future, shaping your future the way that you want it to, to be. That's really what this, is, what this energy is all about. Let's get one more card here. Oh, we got two, but I love it. Whenever I give, whenever I tell Spirit, like, let me just get like a certain number of cards, Spirit always gives me one or two more than I always ask for. So that's a lesson in and of itself. Just remember that Spirit will always give you more than you ask for. 
All right. Oh, we've got the fool. And we've got the devil. Interesting. Don't get scared. Don't get scared. All right. So with the fool card, this is just asking you to take a leap. Take a leap of faith. Jump off the cliff and don't. Some of you are afraid Okay, this is why the devil card is here. Some of you are afraid to dream big. Some of you are afraid to have faith because I feel like in the past, um, you know, you had faith in the past or you took a leap of faith in the past and it didn't work out the way that you had hoped. Others of you are just like, you see how this guy is being held by these strings and he looks, his head is down, he looks frustrated. Some of you are in this space where it's like you let fear take hold of you or you let some sort of addiction, codependency really um, tie you down. So look at how this guy looks right here as compared to how this woman looks. Some of you are in bondage because you are either tied to the past, tied to a particular person, place or thing, you have attachments, particularly unhealthy attachments, that aren't going to allow you to be like this. So for some of you, I feel like the intentions you may have to set is to break free of these chains. I think that's the whole essence of Aquarius season, as I've been saying like repeatedly. But I feel like some of you need to break these chains, these personal chains, these ties that bind, that are keeping you from expressing yourself, that are keeping you from being optimistic. And they're also blocking your blessings. So some of you really need to do some work to sort of get rid of those, uh, these strings. You are no puppet. You are nobody's puppet. You are not a puppet to anyone or to anything. So it's time to cut those strings so you can fully enjoy this energy and create the life that you truly want. All right. But some of you really, okay. And at the bottom of the deck, I don't know if you can see that too well, we've got the hermit. And the hermit, look at how this person is just in quiet contemplation off by themselves. Particularly with Mercury still retrograde, this is the best time for contemplation. This is the best time to really sit, reflect, and get your thoughts in order. This isn't just about spewing random intentions. It's about having a sort of structure to them but in free form, if that makes any sense. But yeah, guys, the energy for this new moon is dope. It's really dope. So definitely take advantage of it and um, set those intentions because this is the time to really change your life and shape your future. All right, guys, so that has been this new moon in Aquarius reading. I just wanted to do something really quick so you guys could understand what the energy is going to be like and act accordingly. I sincerely hope that you guys were able to get at least one important message from this reading. If you would like to book a personal reading with me or order an astrology report, I'll leave those links in the description box below. So don't forget to check those out. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Divine Feminine Works. Every week I do a series called The Week Ahead where I do a reading just like this, just a quick and dirty reading that's like the astral forecast for the week as well as a tarot card pull. So follow me there so you don't miss any of that. Monthly and weekly horoscopes are up on my site. Again, I'll leave those links in the description box as well. My loves, everything I do is a labor of love and comes straight from the bottom of my heart. If you feel so inclined and would like to tip me by buying me a coffee, I'll leave that link in the description box as well. Thank you so much for watching my video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.